This week's movie, Who Am I? You will never look at a restaurant the same way again after you see what me and my colleagues collectively do to stave off boredom. Stay tuned to find out. You're listening to the Banana Reel Movie Podcast, episode 60. Warning, this show contains spoilers and coarse language, so you've been forewarned. Hey there, folks. We are the Theatre Gorillas. My name is Carlos. And I'm Heath. And each and every fortnight we get together and we do this podcast, which is all about talking about movies. Now, we aren't experts or anything like that. We are just two blokes who like movies and we give our opinions, whether you like it or not. Pretty much suck it up and listen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> normally, we also have video to go with our podcast, with something we've been doing this year. But uh, for this particular episode, we have some technical difficulties. Yes, it happens every uh, day. Yeah. So uh, instead, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're just going to have a nice, interesting uh, still image for this episode. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll try and keep it not too long for you. Uh, that way you are not just staring at the same thing and it burns out your screen. Yes. Or, you know, you can always just have it on the background either way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you're at work, that actually might be helpful. Exactly. Um, so before we get into this week's uh, review discussion thing. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to talk about a couple of trailers that have dropped in the last week, two weeks or so. Yeah. Things been um, a yeah. Well, pretty much since the last time we got together. Yeah. So the first of which is, uh, I'm just going to get it out there. Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Now, this trailer Fucking dropped. Take all my money. Yeah, you, you said that. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of agreeing. And there's a couple of things that I'm curious about regarding the movie. And it's um, where exactly this movie falls in terms of the timeline regarding Avengers. Yep. Uh, whether it's before, whether it's after. Uh, I'd like to kind of know. I've got a feeling it's around the same time, I'm guessing, shortly after I Civil think it's, War. It's, well, considering the shot they have in it is like of him taking down uh, Ant-Man, well, Giant Man. Is that in the trailer? Because I'm Yeah, that. yeah, that's in the trailer. So it's like they're talking about and he's be, and he's talking to Tony Stark about not being an Avenger and or he's not being in the Avengers yet. So right. I'm thinking it must be set a little bit after. Maybe not a long time after, but a little bit. Right. Do you, do you reckon this is like set just a couple of weeks after the whole ordeal with uh, Civil War? I actually think so. I think, you know, when you've got that part with him in the car, so he's with Tony Stark, he's in yeah, the car, yeah. and he's like, you know, don't do what I would do and all that stuff, which I thought was a very funny little interaction, especially when he goes to open ah, the door. Do you think that is directly after the airport scene? Yeah, or directly after the events of he's dropping him home or, you know, I actually wouldn't know because remember at the end of um, Civil War he was already home and he had the black eye after, you know, that bad guy from Brooklyn. Yeah, him. yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah. I, got a, I have a feeling this is set months after. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's my that's that's where I'm sort of sitting with this one. Mm. Um, but I am liking the fact that uh, it's finally confirmed and we have visual confirmation that uh, Mr. Keating is our... Is it Keating? I've got that wrong, haven't Keaton. I? Keaton. Uh, Mr. Keating. Mr. Wow. Mr. Keating was our former Prime Minister. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I think he would be of the right age to play Vulture anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Michael Keaton. Uh, I'm actually really glad that he is uh, being confirmed and visually confirmed to be the Vulture in this movie. Because I think I think given that he, he, he seems to be playing... Uh, uh, characters with, to do with uh, flying creatures, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I I think he's of the right age, and uh, I think he understands comic book movies enough to give this a proper treatment. Yeah, I think he'll do a good job as well, and I'm very keen to see how he plays the vulture or how they actually do the vulture um, or vulture, I should just say, because um, you know what was great about that character is that he was so old and he was trying to get yet become young again, mm-hmm. so the creation of that suit, but. Uh, are they going to go down the same road? I, I suspect probably not. Uh, well, it's Marvel. So, it, it, I mean, certain stuff like this is kind of already embedded in the universe. Yeah. And being that it's it's not a Sony Sony picture and its own environment, it, it is a Marvel Studios film. Yeah. yeah. 
being distributed by Sony. Yep. I think that was the agreement. Yeah, or I think they've got some involvement in production, but it's like very limited. Yeah. They so, just take their money. Yeah, well, uh, I'm well, I'm assuming it's Sony that's funding it, right? I think it's partially. Like, I think that the way that they... It's a co-venture. It's like a co-venture. So they're all like, money's getting together and they're making you hear this that? film. You hear that, Fox? Yeah. You hear that? Oh, yeah, please make it happen. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, what was I saying? Doing the Vulture and... That's the, right. Yeah. So doing the Vulture, right? So being the way that the universe is, who knows? We probably have some something maybe even maybe kind of related to one of the gems, the, the, the stones that have been appearing in all the other films. Maybe it, he, he has something. I don't know. I'm just trying to remember what... The soul gem, I think, is the only gem left that we haven't seen. I, I, I would find it really interesting if they embed that Ugh. into the Spider-Man film yeah. somehow, but I hope not, to be honest. Um, I think it would be nice to have something that is removed from all the previous Marvel films having something to do with the Infinity Stones. Yep. Um, and given that, I don't th- I've don't. i got a feeling this Vulture is not going to be co- becoming younger. I think he's just going to be a tech mogul. Yep. Kind of like Stark, but just in the pure evil category hmm. for his own means or gains. Probably... Kind of like Hammer, Justin Hammer in uh, Iron Man 2. Yeah. I mean, he's probably got some kind of personal vendetta that we're going to find out in the film. Yep. And he's high tech gear is going to help him achieve that. Yep. Um, but I doubt it. He's going to find a way to become young, probably find a way to immortalize his name maybe. Mm, it'd be interesting to see. I'm really interested to see it because I like – I mean, look, I'm like Michael Keaton as an actor anyway. So – I think his comeback is really good. Oh, yeah. It's been great. And I mean, like everything I've seen that he's done is fantastic. I really want to see Founder because that looks brilliant as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, very keen. Look, all, you know, I just think – Nothing out. Watching that trailer, I'm like, it looks like they're getting it right. Yeah, you know, it's a young Peter Parker, a young dorky Peter Peter Parker. Uh, actually, one thing I want to say is the wings. Let, let's see if they yeah. actually incorporate the the well, the yeah. web wings in the comics. Actually, really didn't do much. No, it was more as aesthetic, but yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I'd like to see him actually use it as a flying fox kind of yeah, yeah. thing. You know, like. It's not going to help him fly. It's going to help him maybe just glide a little bit. Four with style. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on, the next trailer I wanted to talk about was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Another Marvel film, but still looks amazing. Right. So the so there's been two trailers that have come out. One's a, one's a short teaser, maybe about a minute, half long. The next one was what? A minute extra on top. Yeah, I think another two and a half minutes or something. Yeah. Like. So now the 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 trailer has dropped, and like most trailers after the teaser, I'm afraid to watch them. And this time, I'm kind of right on this one. Uh, I I like what they're doing. I just think they've revealed too much in the trailer. See, I disagree. I think the only thing that they revealed of who the characters are that there's going to be a little bit of a battle, and that's about it. Uh, the whole the whole bit with uh, Groot not understanding yeah. what button to push, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's cute and it's great to show a little bit of that. But I think they focus too long on that, so the moment is going to be gone in the movie. And I've, and general rule of thumb is whatever you show in your trailer is nine times out of ten the best stuff you've got at the time. Yeah, so I'm I'm yeah. hoping that it won't be the case when come to the film. Yeah, but um, yeah, I just I just feel like. Well, it's either they've shown too much in the trailer or they just didn't know how to cut it to make it end well because yeah, yeah. two or three times they come back to the trailer. Yeah. I Look, I like the um, – oh, look, they do. They always come back to that part with, you know, Rocket say, talking to Groot and yeah. then next thing you know, I think that last part time you see him, he's running off with the detonator. Yeah. Which I thought was adorable. He's fucking adorable. Yeah. I was kind of hoping Groot was a full-grown tree again. I bet he will be by the end of the movie. You reckon? Oh, yeah, yeah. I bet it's going to be a lot like... Did you ever read the... Um, just before Guardians came out, they did the uh, 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 Marvel Infinity series. It was like digital only. Uh, no, I haven't read it yet. No? Oh, the Guardians that they did where they're actually just all getting back together. Yeah. Really, really well done. And the way that they did uh, Groot's story was freaking awesome. Like throughout the entire comic, he's just a little tree twig right? Um, that this little girl is taking care of. Mm. And then her village 
gets actually. Attacked. I think I have read this. It's so good. He gets yeah. they get attacked and by out of nowhere, He just grows he full just, size. Yeah, and steps on him. <laughs> it's like this is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think something's going to happen where he's he's going to need to get big? Right. Because I, I noticed they do tease, um, they do tease Baby Groot like shooting vines off to grab someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess the potential's there, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and it's also showing as well in that little part that he's still strong. But I love the part at the end with Mantis. So Mantis, the chick, she's the chick uh, who yeah, 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 can yeah, touch yep. someone and she can uh, feel what they're feeling. Yeah. And, you know, she does the, you know, you feel sexual love for her. <laughs> and, then, and then Drax is like, she talked your deepest, darkest secrets. You must be so embarrassed. Do me. Do me. Yeah. So <laughs> it's good to see the whole cast is back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone knows where they stand with each other now. So there's... There's more room for that social interaction rather than defining who does what in the movie. Exactly, exactly. So that'll be good. That'll be very um, cool. Very much looking forward. Next year with the three big Marvel films coming out. Do we know if it's it's directed by Peter Gunn again? Uh, James Gunn. James Gunn, Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 written and Peter directed. Gunn. Dun, 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 I think Peter Gunn's his brother. Dun, dun. I know Sean Gunn's his brother and he's in that movie. He's in the movies. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, huh. huh. Okay. Uh, last last one is um, uh, help me out, Heath. Trailer? Yeah. What was the last one we were talking about? Lego Batman movie. Oh yeah. 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 So, uh, have you noticed the theme here, people? <laughs> have you noticed the theme? It's all freaking comic books. Yeah, we didn't say Fate of the Furious of all. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I saw the poster for Fate of the Furious, and I'm like, look, I know they're doing one of these a year now, but uh. The fact that they've got family written in the bloody poster, I don't care. Oh, you know what? I do not care. I will not be seeing this movie. Oh, we totally will be. Nope. And it will be amazing. No, oh, I'll be giving it fucking tank girls. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, the look, the Lego series of films are amazing. They like, are. They are good. Even the, really even the really short ones for kids. Yeah, they're very good. On Netflix. Good. I love them. Yeah, they're so good. I swear to God, my wife has caught me watching a couple of the Spider Man ones. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> this well, the, is just really ridiculous the, one. The Justice League one that they did. I still was, haven't watched that one. Oh, it's so funny. It's it, all that kind of, because it's, it's are you telling me? Humor. Are you telling me that Lego, whoever's doing the Lego movies. Is probably doing it better than fucking are Warner you serious? Brothers. Yeah, they're doing it so good. Fucking that's wrong. And, you know, it's just so wrong. They're so humorous and so childish, but then at the same time, just they're awesomely done. Like they're very well done. How can you not like Lego? Jesus Christ. Anyway, the Batman Lego movie looks great. Check out the trailer. Check out the trailer. It's 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 pretty funny. funny. And I have to say, the notion of Batman versus Superman in it, already just the split second of talk about it in that trailer, already for me, wins me over compared to uh, BV Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. It's like so, it's, it's already or Sat- it's, uh, whatever it was, Superman versus Batman or whatever. Batman it was. v Superman. That's Dawn the of one. Justice. Dawn of crap. <laughs> uh, okay, so anyway, that's our quick talk for this week of uh, what we've seen. Check out those trailers; they're great, and we're looking forward to seeing these movies. Absolutely, bloody lutely. Um, yeah. So for this week, we were thinking originally to do an episode on uh, Star Wars Rogue One. Yes, but in Australia, it comes out. Uh, Wednesday midnight. Yeah. So by the time your this episode releases, uh, it will be coming out midnight of this night. Yes. Um, and we thought, oh yeah, we'll watch that and we'll do an episode. But then we realised, fuck, it's actually a day later than we normally drop an episode. Exactly. So we thought, screw it, let's uh, let's quickly choose something to have a look at. So something and- that we've been keen to watch. Well, I have already, se- I had already seen, yeah. but keen to watch. So um. In which case, we'll look at uh, Star Wars Rogue One at a later time. So, we'll see it throughout the course of the next week and we'll probably drop it in time for Christmas. Yep. Uh, So, whether it be one or two weeks away, we might stick to the same schedule uh, and drop it around Christmas time. Yes. Uh, In which case, after that, we're going to take a a break over the Christmas period Mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back in January. So, that's what we have planned for for the next couple of weeks. So, yeah. Yes, stay tuned. But, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to Rogue One. Yeah. In which case, it comes finally time to <laughs> this week's episode. 
Uh, and we are looking at this year's release from Kevin Smith, uh, a fan favourite of ours, but I've got to say, I'm not so fan favourite of this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say it straight off the bat. We are looking at Yoga Hoses. Yes. The second film in the Great North or True North trilogy. Yeah, True North, I think it is. Yeah, the True North trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the first, the first of the trilogy was Task. Yep. Which we haven't even looked at, have we? I've seen it. I know um, you've seen it, but we haven't looked at it. We never really No, we never looked at it collectively. Um, I think we should. I th- kind of think we should as well. Um, I maybe, won't get maybe into, into, into the it, next but year. yeah, maybe in the next year we might revisit a few of his movies. Yeah. And that could be one of them for sure. Maybe, maybe we can do a month of Kevin Smith or something. Yeah, we could. Yeah. He's got enough movies now. We could yeah. do all ones that aren't in the viewer skew universe. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll we'll put that on the on the plate. Uh, so yeah, th- this this week we're looking at yoga hoses. So it's the second of a trilogy that he's planning. Mm. The so the first was Task, as we said. Now Task is a movie about two podcasters, uh, which is kind of eerie considering we're in here doing a podcast about talking about his movies. So. Yes. Uh, any case, uh, yeah, it's about two podcasters, one of which goes to do an interview, and so you'll have to help me out here. But oh yeah, he was, it's basically a guy who has a story to tell about his adventure, seafaring days, right? And uh, <clears throat> he goes to interview this guy, yeah, based on it, uh, and then it turns out that this guy wants to turn him into a human walrus, right? Yeah, and then it becomes like a thriller slash horror, kind of, yeah. Like also almost on the side of uh, human centipede, almost. Yep. Yep. And so in that movie, predominantly is uh, what's his name? Justin Long. Justin Long, and uh, also stars um, uh, Haley Joel Osment. Yes. And um, from from that film, we have an appearance of two girls in particular in a convenience store. Yep. As a little throwback to Clerks. And then from there, we've been given this movie. Yep. Now, considering I haven't seen Task, I'm curious. Is this anywhere in the same vein of presentation? No. Um, so I would say Tusk was almost half like normal. Sorry, almost. So kind of like Red State? Kind of like Red State. Like, I mean, I think Red State's amazing. Like I'm mm. going to put that out there, but so but then kind of has that red state kind of almost horror feel to it, yeah. um, or thrillerness. Yeah, but it starts off if with a lot of humor. Yeah. So before it gets to that, kind of like how we, but we're unlike with Red State. Sorry, where Red State kind of goes and you're in, bang, this is yeah. what's happening, and you're straight away on this little uh, you know adventure with yeah. them. Where now this is kind of like a oh what's going on? This is going to be funny. Oh, there's jokes. Oh, this is good. Oh, next thing you know. Guy wants to build a walrus guy. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like a happy go lucky. Oh wait, no, no you yeah. you you're actually watching a horror. Yeah, Fuck yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I ask is because in this movie, straight from beginning, we have like really cheesy title cards and yep. um and it makes me wonder, like, I know Kevin Smith is a big fan of Canada. Yeah. But it also makes me wonder whether his tribute to Canada making the True North trilogy is actually without – what I'm trying to get at is it makes me wonder whether this movie without having – without trying to do it on serious, on a serious note, is he actually taking the piss out of Canada? Oh, look, you know what's funny? You know how I say, you know, he, he loves Canada and whatnot. I think Canada is just the landscape as in he's gone, I'm going to set this in Canada. Right. Um, but, yeah, I also do think he's taking the – well, like, okay, let's start, let's get straight into the, like, it, like into this film with the title cards, right? Yeah. So when they're all like, oh, wait, I'm checking out these websites, they look like really shit 8-bit versions of real websites. It, yeah, it, it, it definitely looks – it reminds me of, like, Instagram or Twitter yeah, type yeah. of thing. But an 8-bit version, and it's kind of like, are you saying that in Canada they only get 8-bit versions of websites? <laughs> I've got a feeling it's to do with the whole generation thing. Is, right? is that what it's meant to be? I've got a feeling because okay. you know the, the the slang that the girls are using is always like when something doesn't go their way or it's, oh, or it's so really basic. Shit. So basic. Stop being basic. Yeah. Basic what? 
I don't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying. He's trying to create a lingo. Is it? Was he? Because he. Are, we, is it something he created, or is it a generational thing? I've, but, I've 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 never heard anyone say that because I feel like it's that that's their way of saying oh it's that's so simple. Like, oh, you're simple. That's so simple. Don't be so simple. Or so stupid. Yeah, that way, it's that way of saying that. Yeah. But I go, because I remember I think on one of the podcasts, it's like he, the reason why he included that word is because um, Lily Rose De- Depp, who plays, I think it's Colleen M. Yeah. And I oh, know she plays Colleen C. And um, and his daughter, um, Harley Quinn, who plays uh, Colleen C. No, no, other way around. Yeah, it right was the, the other time. way around. Yeah, well, so both Ke- Lily Rose Depp is Colleen C yeah. and Smith is playing Colleen McKenzie. There you go. So Colleen M. When, you, when they have both have the same name, it's very hard. Um, I, th- I think because in real life, that's, they would use that term. Really? Yeah, and so that's why he included it in the script. Really? Yeah. And wow. so it could be. We a- must be really old. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a vernacular we just do not know. Like, I. Maybe we should stress this before we go any further. He did say straight out that this movie, he wanted to make a movie for his kids as a kid's movie for young girls so Ta- that they had something to look up to. Yeah, and he wanted it tar- – like, and actually he said, yeah, he wanted it targeted at tweens. Yes. So tweens, um, for those of you who don't know what a tween is, isn't a tween like a 12-year-old? Uh, well, I, I just, I, well, here we go. This, this will show my age. From what I understand, a tween is meant to be someone who is... Uh, between a, uh, I thought it was between a teenager. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. You know what? Let's let's look this up. Yeah. Because if that's the case, then uh, see, when you look at it in that respect... Between the ages of 8 and 14. That's a fucking massive gap. Okay. <laughs> that's seven years. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like a whole generation. Let's just fucking create new shit. First, you've got like babies. Babies now go to what two? Toddlers go to what four? Then you've got k- k- infants go from what to what? Then you've got tweens now. Then you've got teens. Then you've got adult. Fucking just okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so okay, yeah. So he wanted to make this movie for basically for his daughter. Yeah, not not just to have her star in it, but it was like, I want to make a movie that appeals to that age group. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's where this comes along. And I can see he's trying to make another cult film for a new generation. Mm. I don't know if it kind of works. Maybe not for me, but I don't know about the actual younger generation. Has has this found any kind of a footing that we know of? Well, you know, it's actually funny that you say that because I was listening to Hollywood Babylon, yeah. the most recent one. Yeah. And it's basically because in the States, this movie has just hit at Netflix. It's out on on uh, Amazon. It's out on, uh, what do they call it, um, iTunes. So yeah. it's now readily available. And since then, he's actually been getting some decent reviews from people in a younger age group. Really? Yeah. So it's, you know, not not like, oh, my God, it's now it's off 20%. But rot- they are rotten, enjoying it? But it seems like they are. Okay. Yeah. See, so the, the thing is, like, this movie is very slapstick. Yes. Uh, well, so the fucking... I've, I've heard some comments yeah. in the past regarding his uh, pot smoking and that it's it's finally... Made him go insane. Yeah. Now I, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's made him go insane, but I think it's definitely made him lose the plot on a good three act structure. Yeah, I th- I think it's definitely missing. Yeah, it's 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 mi- missing. Um, boy, it's missing substance. Let's yeah. just put it that okay. way. It's funny that you say it because, like, when I would go say, th- okay, going back to Tusk as well. So Tusk and Yoga Hoses, I think their orientation. Fantastic! He knows how to introduce characters. Yeah, yeah, like the the um in the act one of this, look at the characters get introduced to, and they're freaking great. You've got the Colleens; they're actually not too bad as characters. Mm. Um, you've got and considering this is their f- their first proper like movie movie, right? Yeah, exactly right. So I think given what they've got, like given what they're working with, yeah, not not that I'm saying everything is horrible or anything like that, but the story that they're working with. Uh, the characters that they're kind of playing. Yeah. Uh, the fact that Johnny Depp's in the movie anyway. So from memory, I think uh, Johnny Depp's daughter was was taking a lot of information from her own father. Yeah. 
uh, sort of acting tips or whatever. And to the point that so was uh, Kevin Smith's daughter. Yeah. And I think I think they've definitely done a good job for their first first oh, full absolutely. on go. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um. But some of the other stuff that happens, like I know they're having fun on set. That's one thing I can definitely tell. Oh, you can actually tell they're having a lot of right? fun. There's points where actually I think he left certain cuts in, which would have generally been like a take one. Yeah. Because they're about to crack up mid-scene. Right. So, like, I love Ralph Garman. I think on, the, on their yep. podcast, I think Ralph Garman is the star of the show for sure, right? Yep. But um, the fact that his impersonations... Uh, what he always does in that show yeah. to come out on this movie and do all the impersonations again yeah. and not just write him a like half-decent, serious character. I think it actually hurts Ralph Garman as an actor. Yeah, which is where... That's that's what I mean by he's like his three act structure because you get to you go from having getting introduced to these really interesting characters like or good characters you know exactly like Johnny Depp's character Guy Lapointe, um, Justin Long's character Yogi Bear 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 yeah yeah and whatnot and he, that, he was fucking hilarious every time he said something it was like I love Justin you know Long. have you ever have you ever sat in the toilet by doing Lotus Pose every, <laughs> shit just falls out of you <laughs> like it's <was> fucking great. <laughs> um, and uh, but then yeah, exactly right. Then you meet, you know, Ralph Garman's character at the end. Like, and this is meant to be the conclusion, the resolution of the film. And exactly, he's meant to be making. He's like, I'm going to talk to you, like because like this, like uh, Hollywood a- actors. Oh, okay. Why? Why? You've created these things that go up people's asses and kill them from the inside. Yet you want to feel feel like you want to relate to us and talk to us like. I'm uh, act, and I like it as well. Talk to them like that they're actors that the kids have no idea who they are, and aren't these meant to be your target audience? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, like for the fans that have grown up with Kevin Smith, yeah, the impressions work because it's of our generation. Oh, I don't even still think they work. Anyway, keep going. No, no, no. But I mean, we understand. We knew who they we, were exactly. Like right? when he goes Batman, he and we knew who it was. Yeah, yeah. Because we've grown up with that. Yeah. But as the girls even point out at the table when he's doing the impersonations, they're like, "Who are you supposed to be?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, and I think it's it's kind of evident. I don't know whether Kevin Smith's kind of like, you know, he he's really good at these impersonations, but yes, they're they're kind of outdated. I don't know whether it's like a backhanded comment. To his own or friends? Maybe or? it's more like the younger generation just doesn't get them. I don't know. I think this movie, like, I know we're jumping around a lot. Yeah, we can. But this movie kind of just, it doesn't give us much of a foothold to actually follow through with a discussion. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. there are certain things that I like in this movie. I like the appearances of some, some older actors that have worked uh, with other actors in other things that... Yeah. What, I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. Uh, yeah. um, well, okay. Well, how about that? How about we try this? Theo, what did you like about it? Um. Okay, I'll get because it seems like you're taking that long. I'll yeah, get the ball. Like okay. um, Johnny Depp, Guy Lapointe. Like he, I thought he was the best thing about Tusk as well, and he's very funny. I love I love his roaming mole. Did you notice the roaming yes, mole? Yes, yes, especially in the scene with Ralph Garman. Yeah, yeah, that moves around. Yeah, it was like on Hyper's Drive then. It's yeah. fucking hilarious. I loved like the way he he talks about things. Like it's just the way he speaks. Like the character, the character that Johnny Depp See, plays I, is beautiful. It's it's like, so funny. I like I like Johnny Depp in this movie. Yeah, like I know that I've mentioned Johnny Depp before that I'm getting tired of him. Yeah, but I. I it's Cons- different though. It's because he doesn't play this sort of thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So in this movie, it was actually refreshing to see something of some kind of caliber. Yeah. Um, with Johnny Depp's character though, like I found his accent like strange. No, oh, I loved it. I thought it was and gold. Just, I don't know. I couldn't – I found it hard to sort of pinpoint and I think – I'll tell you what. What I do like is – with Johnny Depp, his appearances, right? <laughs> yeah. So every time he appears, it's there's a moment of like clarity in a really strange way. He 
the character is even old. He's as old as what our generation is. Yeah. And he's he even uh, this movie is about generation gap. I, I've just got to say it. Like, yeah, yeah. This it's is actually not, funny. The more we talk about it, I actually think it is about generation gaps. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, so you've got you've got a villain with old school themes. You've got uh, the detective who is an older person, right? Like the only the only characters that are of of relevance is really the two young girls, and they are so silly. In like their their intelligence is meant to be just dumb, but they fall into the right categories. Like yep. it's kind of like a Scooby Doo moment. Like they just stumble upon the the right killer and happen to know what the yeah, yeah, yeah. What what's to going do. on. Yeah, um, it, it's kind of like one of those moments, um, and it just breeds slapstick nature. Like everything just doesn't quite fit together. It's weird, but it kind of passes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like this movie, just re- I don't know. It just really didn't do much for no, me. No, fair enough. Fair enough. See, it's it's like I remember when I first saw it at the movies. I came out of it going, "That was actually pretty good. Like that wasn't too bad." Then rewatching it again just before this podcast, I went, like I almost fell asleep. Like I was watching it, and I almost fell asleep, and it was not. It was only like eight o'clock in the evening, and <laughs> you know what I mean. And it was because. Once again, though, I really loved the first act. The art, like the getting introduced to the characters, it was hilarious. Introduction to like the parents, I thought was really well done. Even though, you know, like the when, you know, take something stabby with the moil, that was fucking funny ass. Yeah, okay, you know what? That was really clever. You know what? Now that I th- think yeah. about it a little bit more clearly, yeah, where where I had issue with the movie Except, is yeah. where I think it suffered is like. Some of the characters are a little, seem hollow. They're probably not. If you were to watch it two, three times, I'm sure they'd make a little bit more sense. Yeah. I was expecting something a little bit more serious from Kevin Smith, mainly because the last movie I saw was Red State. Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, he's he's on a roll with Red State. Task is a really cool out there themed movie. Um. And now he's he's going on a like slight tangent. He's bringing back a bit of the clerk and craziness of Jay and Silent Bob, but with new characters and a new setting. Yeah. Uh, but with that kind of a flavor, and it just it didn't seem to cohesively sort of come across mm. for me. But what I did like is, I think it's just mainly the girls, the interaction of the girls, and how silly they can be. Yeah. But they're just the friendship is kind of what keeps it together. Yeah. But aside from that, there's not much for me. Yeah. Um, the the effects really make this movie suffer. Oh my god, the fucking digital effects. Oh okay, yeah, like now we can go into you know. Oh, I was gonna say yeah, the the digital effects of like when they killed the Bratzies. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, they looked awful, awful though. I mean, terrible. I kind of actually went was going thinking to myself, why would you bother if you're not going to do it well? Why would you bother? Or was that the point? Like, once again, going back to the 8-bit fucking graphic thing, is that the point? Is it meant to look shit? I think so. i got a feeling it's meant to, but... It, the more we're talking about this, the more confused I am about this movie. I know. that I think I think this is one of those movies that you are meant to be stoned. Maybe I should do that next. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this feeling, honestly. I have yeah. this feeling that this movie will will trip the shit out of you when stoned. And aside from that, like, it, it just won't... It won't appeal to many people. I'll, oh, I'll say that right now. I'm thinking that's why I liked it the first time I saw it. I wasn't stoned, but I was drunk. Yeah, okay. So you're in, inebriated in some way. Yeah. Right? And cause I, like I said, I came over going, that wasn't too bad. I don't know what everyone's hating on it. Got to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be fucked up. <laughs> yeah. um, look, I, I don't know. Like, I think I'll say this. The movie is bold. Oh, yeah. Um. Well, that was the same with Tusk, man. Like, Tusk was bold. Yeah, but bold, he made choices. But bold in a way that's like, okay, we, we're going to try and do like a centipede type movie, right? Yeah. We're going to do like a shock horror. Yeah. A guy's going to get turned like into a walrus. a body horror type yeah, movie, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's fine. Ooh, like, horror, I'm like expecting that. some weird shit. Yeah. I know what that movie's about without having to see it, right? Whereas this is meant to be kind of like a slapstick comedy, but... Which it is, but it's just, I don't know, I expected a little bit more caliber in the writing mm. and it just doesn't happen. Like, I don't care. You can still give me radioactive German Nazi bratwursts or whatever. Fine. I, 
you want to give that to me? Fine, I'll take it. But write the characters a little bit more cohesive. Yeah. Um, the effects are really shit. Fine, not a problem. But why do they? <laughs> why does it look like it belongs in in some kind of cartoon? And it's been stolen, thrown on screen. Yeah. Here? Like I don't know. Like throw some physical effect into it. Yeah. And especially because, like, he had the physical, like, remember how he, you know, he he got in the costume. Use some squibs or something. Yeah, exactly. Like, do something so that way it's more throw physical. Throw some, sp- some sp- uh, spaghetti around or some, if they're bratwursts, just yeah. throw some fucking bratwursts around. What's like, a bratzy? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, do, do something like that. Like, I don't know. I think, we this movie. <laughs> yeah. See, the fa- like, it's funny as well because, I mean, as much as you're saying all the things that you're trying, like, look, there's a sh- there, like, that is, you found, like, oh, no, I shouldn't say f- that you find wrong with it because there's still parts like, yeah, I go, even though on the second watch, like, I can tell you now, the biggest thing, I, you know, you saying the cohesive characters, I think more than anything, what I found was not the, the co- just the cohesive characters, sorry, the cohesive characters, but more, it was the flow of story. Like, it kind of, like, it had this really, like I said, great introduction. Middle, like, you know, when it's like, it, that's where it starts to go nuts. And yeah. you're like, oh, there's these bratsies. Oh, my God, they're going around and doing all this crazy shit. They're trying to go up people's asses. you got the weird satanic kids who wanted to kill the Colleens, which was, like, felt like a pointless endeavor. Um, yeah. Because all that was was a vessel to actually f- see the little bratsies on camera. Yeah. For the f- well, you know, really see, see them. I reckon that would have been a good device to use if like the good old sort of story mechanism of follow the kids, the satanic kids where we think they're the ones that are killing everyone. And instead do then do pull out your fucking Quentin Tarantino, uh, dust till dawn crap. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that movie? That movie was so left field, right? Yeah, so cause it was like next thing you know, holy shit vampires. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Why did, why wouldn't you do that in this? Yeah. Right. Do like a movie where you think these kids are like twisted with being all satanic or whatever, but because they're Canadian, they've got some, you know, a little bit cleaner virtues. Yeah. And we're following them thinking that they're the killers, but really it's the fucking Brathworths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever, however you want to bloody pronounce them, but they come out and then it's like, what the fuck is going on here? (laughs) But then go all out, go fucking nuts at that point. But don't then give me some weird Nazi story of how he's been hiding underground for 70 for odd years 70 odd years and then to learn english he's been watching shit house television on netflix yeah or movies and impersonate people that what and also how did it can if he was working at the university of what winnipeg or whatever it was because wasn't he that's where he was from like he was from Berlin, but wasn't he in the reason he was in Canada was because he was working at the university. Whatever. How's he working at a university in Winnipeg if he can't speak English? Whatever. Whatever the reason. <laughs> whatever the reason. Yeah. I, I how can he get to I just whatever. It, it's this movie is pissing me off. It really is. Yeah. Um oh, well. I will I will say this. It's taken me all this time to think of one thing that I fucking like about this movie. Yeah. And it's and it's definitely this. It is when the parents of Colleen C, yeah, the dad yeah. is with the bitch uh, girlfriend. Well, yeah, yeah, they yeah. think she's yeah, yeah, a bitch, yeah. Natasha Leone. And uh, basically, he wants some some love and time to himself. Yeah, and they're playing the song in the next room. Yeah, yeah. to really get him to be all emotional and everything. And it shows how manipulative. The girls are of her father, and when he decides to fuck off to uh, Niagara Falls, he's like, "No, no, no, I'm not listening. Fuck off. No, no, yeah, I'm yeah. going. Bye." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That interaction and that chemistry between all of them in those moments—that is the best part of this movie. And I was going to say that. And that's about it. Like the the guy who plays the dad, and gosh, I never. He's from um, Arrest Development yeah. and Veep. He's very funny. He's a very good actor. He's a very a very good comedic actor. He's a great, gives great delivery. Uh, it's Tony Hale. Oh, is it? Yeah, yes, Tony Hale. There you go. Yeah, so he plays Bob Collette. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's, the those interactions is what's fantastic about this movie, and uh, Justin Long. 
Oh, Justin Long's, he was so funny. That was almost going back to Bobby Long when he... Um, uh, you got me now. Oh, no, was he Bobby Long? No, no, sorry. Bobby Long was the other... Was the other um, Justin St. Randy. You got me there. In Zach and Miriam make a porno. Oh, yeah. right, right. Salutations. Right, okay, yeah. More yeah. like Glenn Gary and Glenn Ross suck each other's cocks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like it's just that so joke. it's like it's like the the one eighty flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's just that that joke, the the way I like I said, the yoga stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> by cook by sugar by crook, that is the yoga way. <laughs> you know, like it was just very funny. The, all the phone calls with Oh, um, with Warner Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Say, how could <laughs> how could I steal something that I invented just a week ago? <laughs> Um, right. In any case, I think it's time to wrap up on yeah. this one. Um, yeah. Uh, Heath, do you want to start? Oh, look, I think I've actually kind of said it all. It's I, I, I feel like Kevin Smith, look, I, will all, I, I still like Kevin Smith stuff and I will always love Kevin Smith stuff. But with this one, I just don't think I'm the target audience for it. It started off really well and then just went, nope. And... I got bored by the end. I got bored. Um, but saying that, though, Johnny Depp uh, was amazing. I thought the girls acted very well. Justin Long was hilarious. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to give this one um, two bananas. Wow, you're actually giving this thing bananas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because guess what? Yeah. I'm not. Oh, what are you going? Are you going tanks? A fuck oath. Holy shit, we've got a tanks. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah. <laughs> when we found one. <laughs> Oh, um, wow. Look, there's not enough in this movie to make me love it. <laughs> <laughs> even even redeem it with half a banana. Holy shit. Yeah, no. It's just this fucking thing is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, Johnny Depp is fine. Like some of the actors are, aren't are pretty good with what they're working with and what the characters are. I'm not going to lie. They, they they do good good roles, right? Yeah, yeah. But the story is just rubbish. And like I like a good slapstick stupid movie, but it's it just cohesively does not work. Like I've seen I've seen really really stupid movies and their premises are dumb as hell. Like Grandma's Boy. Oh, I love that movie. But that movie is still incredible. Like yeah. it, it I is I rewatched fantastic. that the other day and I lo- and I thought it was hilarious. Right. Th- yeah. That movie just works, yeah, right? It's so good. Now, this movie is trying to be kind of something like that, but it just doesn't quite get there. Um, but, yeah, like actors like Johnny Depp and, and so forth, they're fine. They bring interesting characters or moments to the movie, but it's just not enough for me. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the girls are great, which is unfortunate, but I'm going to, like, I was prepared to give this thing fucking three tank girls, honestly. But in saying that, with those few moments, I'm going to give this two. Wow, two tank girls. Yeah. So what that means, folks, is that it's not so bad that you can't watch it. It's you can watch it. Just be prepared. (laughs) Right? So, yeah. All right. So that's our discussion on this week's uh, episode. Stay tuned for the end of the theme song to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I?, is. But before we go, uh, rate us on iTunes uh, leave a comment, subscribe on YouTube and yep. thumbs up, all that stuff. Just help us out because uh, every also, little every little bit helps, honestly. Yeah, you can also find us on Podbean as well. Yes, uh, everywhere. Yep. We're on Podbean? Yeah, I added this. Oh, sweet. Yeah, because I was I wanted to use a new app and now I'm using Podbean. I was like, sweet, we're not on it. Actually, <laughs> actually that might help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, share us around, whatever, yeah. like whores. It's great. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> anyway, um, loose buttocks. We'll see you in a fortnight, guys, or maybe a week. We'll see what happens with Rogue One. Exactly right. In any case, have a great Christmas. Uh, we sh- hopefully you'll hear okay, hear from us before Christmas. Yeah, I hope so. Anyway, but just in case, Christmas. Yay! Presents. Yay! <laughs> hopefully not this fucking movie. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. We'll see you soon. It to you now. <laughs> Bye. See ya. And you've stayed on to find out what this week's movie, Who Am I, is. And the answer is... Waiting. Groundhog Day. Is no, 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 <laughs> no. It's the movie Waiting. Waiting? Yeah. It's Waiting from 2005.
With um, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds and Justin Long. Long. I said I loved him. Oh, that's awesome. God, I've not seen that movie in ages. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. Now, remember what I said about slapstick stupid movies? Yeah. This is one of them. Oh, And man. it works. It's actually, it's actually really funny as well because it was that whole beginning era of Ryan Reynolds comedic acting in movies and stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's Because Van still... Wilder came out only like a year or two earlier. I'm pretty sure Van Wilder was sooner, a lot sooner. Than oh, really? Me. I think so. Oh, well, I don't know. I might be wrong on that. But in any case, this movie is great. It came out of nowhere. It's still one of my all-time favorites that are just random comedies. Yeah. Um, there's not a great deal to learn from the characters in this movie, but the the mechanics in this movie are fantastic. The new the new guy that comes to work for them, he never gets a word off through the entire movie until the very end. Fantastic. Yeah. And it just when he explodes, he explodes with full force and colour. It's great. Nice. Uh yeah, so anyway, we have the Theater Gorillas. We'll see you in a fortnight, guys. Or a week. Or sometime. Sometime. Yeah. Bye. Bye.